This video is sponsored by Brilliant. One of my favorite table games in the casino is that of craps. Also one of the most intimidating with how much is going on, but we don't need to know how to play for this video. The only reason I'm even bringing it up is because the game is played with a pair of dice, and for most of the board, all we care about is the sum of the dice. There are some exceptions, which you can see here, but for the most part, all we care about is the sum. So for example, if you bet $5 on the pass line, the most common bet, and your first roll is a 7, you win $5. It does not matter at all whether it's a 6 and 1, or 5, 2, or 4, 3. Now the odds of rolling a 7 would be 1 out of 6. You can look at all the possible sums here, and we have 6 out of 36 of them are a 7. Now, decades ago, this question was asked. Could we relabel the two dice in some different way, with only integer faces still, such that the probability distribution remains the exact same? As in, could we change these numbers, and in the end still have a 1 out of 36 chance of rolling a 2, and 2 ways out of 36 to get a 3, and so on? And you can make any change you'd like, by the way. So like, let's say for this die, we change the two into a one. And for the second die, all we do is change the two into a three. Now with this new pair of dice, does the probability distribution remain the same? Well, definitely not. It only takes two squares to see that. Cause now this square right here is still a two, but so is this one now. Thus, there's now 2 out of 36 ways, or a 1 out of 18 chance, of rolling a 2, when the original probability was 1 out of 36, so things did not remain the same. Alright, now slight spoiler coming here, but what I find cool about this is that there is a way to change the dice and leave the probability unchanged, but there is only one possible way to make that change. There's only one other set of six-sided dice that could possibly exist where all the sums slash probabilities remain unchanged. You could play craps and the odds, house edge, payouts, expected win slash loss, and just the game itself remains unchanged. Mostly, only exception would be those bets I pointed out earlier that we weren't caring about. And the way to find that second pair of dice is amazingly with this polynomial. And real quick, I just want to mention, for those who saw my video on going through an abstract algebra textbook, this question is actually found in that book. Although it has very little to do with abstract algebra. I will mention how that comes in towards the end and just it'll just be a very vague summary. But this is mostly a combinatorics problem. But it is cool to see how combinatorics and abstract algebra can come together to answer a question about dice. But now let's get back to it. The first thing we're going to do is represent a single regular die with this polynomial. This is called a generating function for the throws of a die, and we'll see why it's useful in a second. But notice all the coefficients are 1, which I will write from here on. The way to relate this function to the die is that there is one way to roll a 6, and one way to roll a 5, one way for a 4, and so on. The coefficients tell us the number of ways to roll the number in the exponent. This is useful to us because look at what happens when we multiply the function by itself, representative of rolling a pair of regular dice. The output would be this function here, and do you notice something with the coefficients and the exponents in relation to the original table of sums? Like how there is one way to roll a 12 and two ways to roll an 11, six ways to get a seven, and so on. It's this polynomial that really captures our probability distribution. So now we know we can take two generating functions whose coefficients and exponents tell us exactly how to label each die, and their product reveals the table of all possible sums. Thus, to find another pair of dice with that same table of sums, we just need to find two different functions that still have that same product. 
Now I'm going to do some hand waving here and avoid the detail, but this polynomial can be factored as such. So this means our generating functions must contain these as factors. For example, one function could be this here, just directly taking two of these terms. And the other one would be this, taking the other two. These multiply to what we want, and individually they reveal how to label our dice. But the problem is, if you multiply out the polynomial on top, you get this here, which says that your die must have one side labeled 6, two sides labeled 5, three labeled 4, two labeled 3, and one labeled 2, which is a total of nine sides, not the 6 we're looking for. And in this example, the other die would have this generating function, meaning one side would be a 6, two would be labeled 3, and one would have to be labeled with a zero, because this is technically 1x to the zero. So a total of four sides. However, it's still interesting to note that if you did have a fair nine-sided die with these labels, and a fair four-sided die, a tetrahedron, with these labels, then you would, yes, get the exact same probability distribution. You could play craps, and it would, again, be mostly the same game. One way to roll a 12, one way to roll a 2, 6 7s, 5 8s, and so on. Not a lot of room, but I'll put the original table of sums here if you want to compare. But we still need two generating functions that each represent 6-sided dice. I'll show screenshots later of the more rigorous way to find this because it's kind of involved, but if we take one of these first three factors for our first die, and one of the first three, plus the entire last factor for the second die, then look at what happens. We multiply out the top polynomial and we get this, a generating function for a die with these as the labels, which again we find with the coefficients and exponents. And here there's six in total as desired. The other polynomial multiplies out to this here, representing a die with these labels. And we have our answer. Two dice that aren't each labeled 1 through 6, whose probability distribution of any given sum matches that of two regular dice. These are known as Sickerman dice, and are the only pair of six-sided dice with that same probability distribution. Now here is the full solution from that abstract algebra textbook I went through. And real quick, I'm going to pause here to note that the algebra part of this question comes in because this solution assumes that our original generating function has a unique factorization, as in it can't be factored in more than one way, which is the case when it comes to polynomials with only integer coefficients. And that's something you prove in abstract algebra. This term here is simply the set of all polynomials where the coefficients are restricted to just integers. And we know we can't factor a polynomial in more than one way with that restriction. Kind of like numbers can be factored into primes in only one way. And it's this unique factorization that proves the uniqueness of the Sickerman dice and how there's nothing else besides regular dice with that same probability distribution. So feel free to look through this proof of how each generating function was specifically found. And if you want to dive further into abstract algebra with an introduction to group theory, you can do just that over at Brilliant, the sponsor of this video. This course introduces you to the mathematics and the applications of groups. Groups are foundational for understanding symmetry, whether it be within math itself, physics, chemistry, or games, and so on. And in this course, you'll see how you can use groups to analyze, for example, configurations of certain board games with some underlying symmetry or the mechanics of a Rubik's Cube. You'll analyze geometric symmetries and plenty more. And what's great about this platform is all their courses come with interactive exercises and visuals so you can really gain that mathematical intuition even when it comes to the more advanced concepts. So if you want to get started right now and support the channel, then click the link below or go to brilliant.org slash stackstar and the first 200 subscribers to sign up will get 20% off their annual premium subscription. And with that, gonna end that video there. Thanks as always to my supporters on Patreon. Social media links to follow me are down below, and I'll see you all in the next video.